all the change, all the transformation that we could possibly desire is in the unknown. I mean, it makes sense because it's in the quantum field. It hasn't materialized yet. It has not come down into reality. You need to be able to stop the thought and you need to be able to stop the emotion. And if you can't stop the emotion, it means you're addicted to it. And so you have this quantum field of limitless possibilities, limitless realities playing themselves out, each operating at a frequency, even though there's always going to be something else that I want to create, more to grow into, more to evolve into, I will always be up for the task. Welcome to It's Not What You Think, the podcast that takes you on a transformative journey to rewrite your story of greatness and reawaken your soul's purpose. I'm your host, Celine DaCosta, a subconscious mind expert, master coach, and believer in the limitless power and magic that lives within all of us. My intention in this podcast is to propel you into your next level of success so that you are free to create the life that your heart most desires. Through deep, actionable insights, personal stories, and world-class guests, I'll provide you with the tools, strategies, and resources you need to unlock the fullest expression of who you're meant to be in this lifetime so that you can consciously design a reality that is beyond what you could have ever dreamed of. Join me on this journey to personal growth and evolution, and let's live our lives in accordance with our highest soul's calling. This podcast is your weekly check-in to help this path become more simple, obtainable, and fun. Thank you for tuning in today, and now let's dive in. Hello, hello, beautiful humans listening to It's Not What You Think. Welcome. Today is a solo episode, and I am actually recording this from Cyprus. Funny enough, I just landed a couple of days ago after many, many weeks of traveling. You know, for those of you who might be familiar with my lifestyle, I have been a, I guess you could say, digital nomad for the past. Oof, we're coming up on eight years now, and uh, it's a really beautiful part of my life that um, I appreciate and sometimes drive me nuts, but that's that's another story for another time. And so I have been doing a lot of traveling in the past few months. I just came from Sweden. Before that, I was in Italy. Before that, I was in Ibiza, Spain. Um, and before that, I was traveling the U.S. for five weeks going to um certain conferences and uh, going there to do VIP days with clients. And I had some work engagements to take care of as well. But anyways, the reason why I bring that up is because um, I have been integrating a very, very potent experience that I finally feel ready to share with you now, which is my experience uh, going through a train the trainer program with Dr. Joe Dispenza himself. And for those of you who don't know who Dr. Joe Dispenza is, he is just this brilliant mind. He's an international speaker, a researcher, an author of some best-selling books, including Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself and my personal favorite, which is Becoming Supernatural. So he's a multi-time New York Times best-selling author, and he's an educator who's really passionate about uh, using uh, the findings from the fields of neuroscience, from epigenetics and quantum physics to explore the science behind mysticism and what it actually takes for a human being to change and to be happy. So he is a fascinating man. And ever since reading his book, okay, let, actually let's talk about, let's take a step back and talk about manifestation here because ever since I read his book a couple of years ago, I remember reading Becoming Supernatural and I've been involved in, you know, in, in the, in the work of using, even though I do coaching, um, I involve a lot of neuroscience, a lot of those principles in my work about the science of change and how human behavior works. You know, I've been really deeply involved in, um, emotional intelligence and how to grow and develop your emotional intelligence, how to shift your mindset, all of these things that I've been learning from my certifications and from just being an ardent student of this work. And when I came across Dr. Joe's work, I was so impressed because what he did and the way he does it just basically took 
all of these different fields that I was working on, all these different modalities, and tied it up in a neat bow in a way that I hadn't experienced before, which will hopefully, you know, I'll be sharing some more insights of that in today's episode. And this is what I found really cool about his work is just this, wow, okay, the way he explains it is so simple to grasp and it's so scientifically based that my mind can't help but accept it, you know, because there's a lot of principles that he talks about that in, in my work studying with a shaman, in my work doing, you know, being in the spiritual community um, and just dipping into these different modalities, I'm familiar with many, many of these concepts, but didn't necessarily have a science backed explanation for them. And that's where I think his superpower is. So lo and behold, in, um, so we are at July at the time of this recording. So about one year ago, one year and a half ago is when I read his book and I decided to go to one of his advanced retreats, which are these really intense one week retreats where you're meditating for hours every single day and uh, really just practicing the principles that he teaches. And when I was in this advanced retreat, I remember walking out of the conference room for a break and just finding myself standing in front of this booth called Neuro Change Solutions. And I thought to myself, hmm, what's this? So I asked. And what I discovered was that Dr. Joe, he runs a program where he picks a select number of people every year. You have to go through a rigorous application process. And then he, he chooses a group of people to teach what he does uh, in a corporate setting. So to train trainers, people who already are trainers, such as myself, to go into corporate and to be able to support corporate structures to essentially know how to drive and affect human change so that it can improve the culture so that people, you know, if somebody knows how they're getting in their own way, if someone has the ability, the power to change, then obviously that's going to reflect in the workplace. It's going to reflect in the revenue. It's going to reflect in the company culture. And so I looked at this booth and I, and I had that short conversation with somebody who's working there. And I, and I just had this, I just knew I was like, I'm going to be there. That's I'm one of these people that he's going to teach. And so fast forward to, you know, five months later, I applied that night. I applied that night. And then, um, a few months later I heard back and, you know, I had made it to the interview and then I made it to the next round of the interview. And then lo and behold, I get accepted into this program and I fly all the way from Bali to the U S to, um, be taught for a few days by Dr. Joe Dispenza, which was so freaking cool. And also to present to him, which was it's done now, but extremely nerve wracking. And although today's episode, I'm not going to be per se, like regurgitating the information I learned in the training simply because I can't do that in, in less than an hour. I wouldn't want to do that. And it's also part of a, a really, this is, uh, these principles are part of a really powerful two day corporate training, um, that I'm currently training to deliver to companies. And so so yeah, I'm not going to go into the specifics of that, but what I do want to share today is the biggest insights that I received from the experience, um, the biggest aha moments that I had from spending these five days, not only with this very brilliant human being, but with a group of brilliant human beings, because needless to say, the people that he attracts and the people who were sitting in that room with me were um, incredibly impressive. And we learned together so much that I wasn't able to share before now, simply because I hadn't integrated it. And my ethos is that when I have a big experience, first I integrate it and then I talk about it. So here I am. So there's a few key insights that I want to share with you today that I believe are so potent as to what it really means to take yourself through a meaningful, long-lasting transformation. And because that's what this is all about. And honestly, this work that I do, this podcast, what I share in both my offers as well as my free content, at the core of it is really this desire to support the collective. And myself, obviously, because it always starts with ourselves to be able to create positive change in 
our lives. And what I mean by that is to live a life that is in accordance and in alignment to how you want to live, which for a lot of people looks like freedom, love, joy, you know, like growth, contribution. There's these core human needs that each one of us have as human beings for how we can live a more fulfilling, joyful, beautiful life. And it's really easy to forget about that when we are entrenched in our everyday routines or in our everyday doing, um, to forget why we're doing this in the first place. And how is it that we want to feel when we are walking our path every day? So also just a quick disclaimer before I dive into my insights is that um, the insights that I'm sharing in this episode are me paraphrasing from my own experience and my perspective what I received from the training and what struck me from that training. And what it is not is me summarizing what Dr. Joe Dispenza said or putting words in his mouth or, you know, um, you know, explaining his concepts. That's not what I'm doing. It's, this is really a subjective um, uh, integrated experience of what, what I loved about being there and what I learned after I contemplated on it. So let's dive in. The first big aha insight that I received from my time there. And again, this is something that I knew, but didn't feel super certain on. And now I feel certain, which is that humans can change. You know, I, I remember growing up many times I heard the phrase, people can't change. People are going to be the same. And in many ways, I was trained to just give up on people and just renounce myself. Like when there was somebody um, just being like, yeah, whatever, like you just have to, that person's not going to change. And there's a difference between accepting someone for who they are and projecting onto them the belief that they're not going to change. And I would go as far as to say that when you're doing the latter, when you're projecting the belief that this person's not going to change, you're actually just creating that reality for yourself and you're creating an environment, um, depending on what your relationship is with that person, where they can't change because you, you, you expect them not to change. So even if they wanted to change, they're not really being set up for success, at least not in your world. And so we walk around, when we walk around with that belief system clouding our lens, um, we start tricking ourselves into believing that people can't change and they're going to be the same way. And then you don't want to be wrong. Your ego doesn't want to be proven wrong. So of course, everyone is going to be the same, including yourself. So I don't think that's a, it's, I find this to be a very detrimental belief system that in my world, I've just obliterated, to be honest. Um, I believe with certainty and yeah, precision that human beings can change, that we can change who we are how we act, how we think, how we feel, and that we have this ability within us to transition from an old way of being into a new preferred way of being. And this is a novel concept for a lot of people who maybe have been living in similar circumstances or feeling stuck in their current situation for years, if not decades. But even before being introduced to Dr. Joe's work, through my own work, coaching, and watching my clients have these tremendous transformations, which are actually also being going to be um, released on this podcast in, the, in this season. We're going to have some case studies of people sharing the just incredible, at first, even unbelievable changes that they were able to create for themselves in so little time, even before being introduced to this specific um, you know, school of thinking, I, I knew I've always known in my heart, like there has to be a way to change your life. There has to be a way to transform. We can't, it, it doesn't make sense to me that we've been put on this earth to just repeat the same thing again and again. And if we don't like it, we're stuck with it. And if we don't, we're not happy, we just have to deal with it. I just couldn't believe that ever. And now, you know, because I refuse to believe that through my studies of several modalities, this one included, I'm really starting to see the different layers of how 
it's true. And so specifically from, you know, what I learned from Dr. Joe that I really loved because I had an episode in season one, it's called ego or soul, you know, how to know who's in charge. Because one of the things that I teach and I talk a lot about is knowing how to discern between whether your soul is in the driver's seat or your ego's in the driver's seat, the ego being the personality that you've created, your soul being that unquantifiable essence, that life force that runs through you. And so it's so important to know when your soul is in the driver's seat, because when you're following, you know, the whispers of your soul, in my experience and the experience of many, many people that I know and and respect and have seen like create and reinvent a better path for themselves over and over again, is that when you listen to your soul and you take steps from that space, from a space that is soul driven, that is from your heart, that's the seed of the soul. And you start taking your steps from that place, life works out better than you could have possibly imagined. But when we are in a reactive state to our ego, then things work out the way we think they will. And when things work out the way we think they will, it means that they will work out based on our current foundation of belief systems and conditioning, which can many times be limiting and disempowering us. So if we have limiting belief systems around money, then life, and we're being ego-driven, then life is going to work out the way we think it is, which is that if you believe that there's not enough money, that's what you'll experience in life. If you believe that money's hard to come by, that's what you'll experience in life. If you have belief systems around love and not being worthy of love, well, your life is going to turn out the way you think it does when you when you are taking your steps coming from your ego, and therefore you are going to consistently see your own thought patterns reflected back to you in your reality, which is bananas. I don't want to live my life like that. I want to live uh, connected to something bigger than me and connected to my heart and connected to love and freedom and joy and all those feelings I want to feel because obviously any step that I take from that space is going to work out in that way for me again, better than what I could possibly think. So all that being said, when, um, one of the things that, uh, Dr. Joe talks about a lot, and by the way, you can find a lot of this as well in his book, um, breaking the habit of being yourself is that your personality is composed of the way you think the way you feel and the way you act. And so what I took away from that is, oh my goodness, your personality is a formula. It's your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. And so it's not something that's set in stone. It's not something that you're doomed for for the rest of your life. It's not something you need to keep if you don't want it. So Your personality is based on your thoughts, your feelings, and actions, which means that if you are engaging in the same thoughts, feelings, and actions day in and day out, you are going to have the same reality. You're going to create the same reality. And the way he talks about it is that your personality creates your personal reality. So you're going to create the same reality. So it makes sense then that if you are changing your thoughts and your feelings and your actions, you're going to change your personal reality. And so when that really clicked in, it's so simple. It's so simple. And there's also, you know, so much science and neuroscience that proves this, that I'm not going to dive into detail today, just because again, I want to be mindful of time, but, um, you know, to, to summarize it, there is what he calls, um, the biology of change. There is a science to how you can change yourself in a way that is sustainable. Cause a lot of people, they try to change and then they're not able to. So then they get frustrated with themselves or, and they give up on themselves because they're like, well, I don't know how to change. And then of course, because they don't know how to change, they give up on themselves. And then they start to project that feeling onto other people saying, well, people don't know how to change, but it's not because people don't know how to change. It's because most people don't know how to change. That's the actual issue. It's not that you can't change is that you don't know how to change effectively and sustainably. And and it's two different problems to solve. One is a bit more existential and a rabbit hole that has no end. The other one 
has a methodology to it. It has a system. And so when you learn the system, when you learn how to change and how to do it effectively, efficiently, then you're able to change yourself faster. Does that make sense? And so the most helpful explanation that I received is that your thoughts and your feelings are not these like abstract concepts. They're literally energetic outputs that can be measured in the biology of your body. And so maybe some of you have heard of an electromagnetic field, which is essentially this field, this energy field, bioenergetic field that surrounds us. And, you know, if you're in the spiritual com- community, you've definitely heard the people saying like, this is in my field, this is in your field. Oh, our fields are mixing or whatever. Like the field is referring to that electromagnetic field around us. And I'm going to try to explain this as simply as possible. Just know that, you know, for those of you who are like super well-versed in this topic and, uh, and like really nerdy about the science, please forgive me because I am intentionally, um, looking to oversimplify this just for the sake of getting this message across. So the, your thoughts are the electro it's the, it's the electricity that goes out into the electromagnetic field. So your thoughts are putting out energy and information And the magnetic are your emotions and through your emotions, which are essentially energy and emotion, you are magnetizing in. So the, uh, the toroidal field looks like, um, well, I can't explain it as well in voice, but if for those of you who are watching this in video, it's coming from the center and then it's going out and then it's pulling back in. So it's very much like a magnet. And so we as human beings are like, we have these electromagnetic fields around us that magnetize or push away things from us. And so our thoughts are what create the electricity and our emotions are what create the magnetism. And again, this is all scientifically proven and measurable. And so when I started to really look at the science behind this and realize, oh my gosh, our thoughts is literally the act of us putting out a certain signature and a certain electric electric signature. I don't know the, the technical term for this right now, but when we think we are putting out a certain signature and when we feel we're pulling in a certain signature. And so when we're thinking and feeling, we are creating an electromagnetic signature that makes us a match for a similar electromagnetic signature that is going to be in resonance and coherence with whatever we're putting out. And so if we translate this into somebody who's having very positive thoughts about life, um, let's see, let's make this, I'll, I'll go back to business. Like somebody who's having very positive thoughts about money and feeling abundant. So they're having positive thoughts about money, which is money is easy to come by. Um, money comes to me at all times. I'm always taken care of. Those are the thoughts that are coming out and they feel abundant and they feel joyful and they feel excited about the next opportunity that's going to come in. They are, um, radiating this thought feeling of money is easy to come by and I'm an abundant person. And so when they walk into a room, they will naturally be gravitated towards that opportunity, somebody who is going to offer a really easy to come by opportunity that feels really abundant. And it's, it's ding, ding, ding. It's a match. So then that person offers you this job opportunity and you're not going to self-sabotage thinking, Oh, that's, I'm not, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true, right? That's how people self-sabotage is by doubting their thoughts. And someone's going to say, yes, absolutely. This sounds like an incredible opportunity. Of course, I'm going to say yes to that. And it's a match. And that's how you attract like-minded opportunities, like like thought, mind, feeling opportunities. And then when you're feeling this way, you're going to take actions from that space. So if you feel like you're an abundant person, you feel abundant and you're thinking you're, you're really worthy and you're thinking that money, money is easy to come by you're going to have a conversation with a certain person at that party and you're going to have no problem being like, Oh, um, I actually have 
I'm like, this is how it can help you do that. Do, do you want, you know, do you, do you want to give it a try? And then sign on a client just like that in a few seconds, because your action is mirroring, like you're confident and you feel good and you feel like money is easy to come through by, and you're feeling abundant. And therefore the actions you're going to take is naturally going to rise from that really aligned, like this is easy place. And so in that way, the way that we are walking around every day, thinking, feeling, and acting is extremely important because it is literally shaping our reality. And, you know, our thoughts, um, when we have thoughts, it's literally like we are firing circuits in our brain. When we have a thought, you can do like a brain scan and then it goes like ding, 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 ding. And there's a thought that is firing off in your brain. And then if you have another thought that's similar. So if you say, for example, uh, let's say you're feeling frustrated in your business and you're thinking my team doesn't support me. And now it's like pinging your brain, ding, 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 ding. And then you have another thought, which is my gosh, I always have to work so hard to make anything happen. Ding, 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 ding. That's another ping. And then you have another thought and the thought goes along with my gosh, uh, like nobody wants to buy my work. Right. And then all of these thoughts basically vibrating together in that moment, they, they start creating a circuit in your brain that then sends a signal to your uh, hormonal center that says, Hey, we are, uh, worried. I'm worried. Please now create chemicals to reflect that. And it's bananas because then literally your brain will tell your body to create these hormones that are going to be secreted in your body that create like a biochemical reaction in your body, which we call an emotion, which then will start to like secrete and release these hormones in your body that will make you feel more stressed, more worried, more upset, whatever that feeling is. And then the more stressed, worried you become, the more thoughts you generate to actually feel more worried. So you basically, it, it becomes a negative feedback loop where you're worried and then you feel worried. And because you feel worried, now you're thinking more worried thoughts and then you're basically re-perpetuating and going down a spiral. Um, and that is really not good. So what needs to happen in order to change? It's so simple when it's being said. And what makes it challenging is the actual practice and embodiment of it, which is you need to stop the thought. You need to be able to stop the thought and you need to be able to stop the emotion. And if you can't stop the emotion, it means you're addicted to it. So think about it. If you're feeling angry and I told you, stop, stop feeling angry and you can't stop it. Like you literally cannot stop feeling angry, even though you know, it's not good for you and you know, it's, it's not healthy and it's not the best thing to be doing, to be feeling in that moment. If you can't stop it, you're addicted to it. It's, it's very simple. And it's something that's really hard for a lot of people to accept. And that's also why when it comes to emotional management and the importance of emotional management, uh, and having those tools in your tool belt is to be able to know how to move the energy and how to cope with the energy when it's running it, like basically, basically when it's running through your body. There's energy, emotion is energy in motion. There's all this energy that's moving through and it's a chemical reaction and we can do what we can do with our emotional management tools to be able to manage it in real time, to soothe it, to, to um, alleviate it. But at the end of the day, if you can't stop it, then there's an addiction and that's really the root of the problem. And that's what we're at the actual quote unquote healing needs to happen is finding the root of the problem and doing something about that, which are, which are the thoughts that you're allowing, uh, you're surrendering to unconsciously. So it's, this is really about the skill set of being able to bring the unconscious to the conscious and to be able to become so aware of yourself that you don't allow toxic thoughts to slip on by in your unconscious therefore creating an emotional reaction and getting you addicted to an emotion that you don't want, like feeling stressed or angry all the time, or just, just feeling bad. Like, why would you want to feel bad? And if you're in a place that you're like, yeah, but I can't help it. It is an addiction in which case, yes, you can help it. You may just not know how to do it. And that's the skill set that you get to learn to be able to interrupt this pattern and take back control of your life. Because when we just 
accept and just surrender to these emotions that are running through our body, then we're just, that's going to be our experience because, you know, something else that Dr. Joe teaches is that the end result of any experience is an emotion. Like we, and when we even look at things such as the study done by the Harvard Business Review that proved that 95% of purchasing decisions are made from emotion and then justified by logic. And when you really start to look at the science of this and how we as human beings are so deeply emotionally driven, but the, the biggest joke of it is that we think we're in control and we think we're logical and we think we're rational, but we're actually so predictably irrational it is hilarious. Actually, one of my favorite books is called Predictably Irrational because it just shows you how we are so irrational that you can actually start to predict how irrational we are as human beings. Like we're not rational <laughs> beings, but we built an entire society where we are in this illusion that we are and completely neglecting the reality of how our bodies actually work. The society that most of us have grown up within has created this collective, you know, reality based on the collective personality that we need to be based so deeply based on logic and rationality and everything needs to make sense down to the number while completely neglecting that we're emotionally driven creatures. And for the most part, most human beings, at least I've interfaced with, do not know how to manage their emotions in a healthy manner. And so that creates a really big problem because there is a lot of people running around being very addicted to the emotions of stress, to the emotions of anger, to emotions of, you know, worrying. And that creates a big issue because when you're stressed and you're anger, angry and you're in that survival state, you are not able to think or function properly because literally 70% of the resources in your body are focused on helping you survive and helping you, you know, um, be like in that sympathetic state. For those of you who, you know, may not be familiar with the nervous system, we have two branches. We have the sympathetic state and the parasympathetic state. The sympathetic state is essentially the fight, flight, run um, it's a part of us that there's a tiger chasing us. So we mobilize ourselves and we go and we do something. It's when we are, um, you know, late to work and we really need to like drive very quickly and get through all the traffic. That's us being in a sympathetic state. Parasympathetic is rest and digest and human beings. Ideally, we are designed to be mostly in our rest digest state. That is when we are connected. That's where we are, you know, um, collaborating. That's when we are in love, in our hearts. That's when we're calm. That's when we are more open, empathic, social. And when we're in our sympathetic state is when we are in get shit done mode. Like I need to run from the lion that's chasing me metaphorically, even though there's no actual lion chasing me. I need to do more. I need to work harder. I need to fix this problem. And we get into this overdoing, overworking. Uh, I need to do everything that I can to survive, which also makes us more self-centered. It makes us less concerned about the well-being of the collective. It makes us basically focused on ourselves and ourselves only and our meeting our core needs, which is not the formula for a healthy, like, home family, collective, village, city, world, you name it. And so what does this mean? Like it, one of these things that, that is so important and it's such a key central part of the work that I do is to educate people on what it actually means to be in the driver's seat of your soul, which looks like you are the observer of your thoughts. You are not associating yourself and going unconscious believing that you are your thoughts, but rather you understand that your thoughts are an energy that's coming out. Your emotions are an energy that's pulling in. And when you're able to be the observer of that and manage your emotions and manage your thoughts, then your actions are going to change. And when your actions change, then your reality changes, your experience changes. And when your experiences change, then you are generating a different set of emotions, which are therefore influencing your thoughts again. So by changing your thought, that means that, you know, you make a different choice. And when you make a different choice, you take a different action. When you make a different action, you're going to find a different experience. 
which is also part of what, you know, Dr. Joe talks a lot about. So that brings me to, you know, the, the first, so just to summarize, the first key insight that I wanted to share with you is that people can change and there is a science to change. And once you understand the science the, the, or the method of how to change in your life, you can change and it will take energy and effort on your end, but it doesn't have to be complicated. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be this convoluted, complex thing that takes you years on end, but it's rather a very simple sequence that you need to follow with discipline and devotion. Yeah. And that sequence is really just, you got to shift your thoughts. You need to feel the emotion that you want to actually feel instead of defaulting into the um, emotion you're addicted to feeling. And you take action with that thought and with that emotion, you move from that place. You take an action from that place. And when you take an action, you are going to experience a new result. And when you experience a new result that as long as, as, as you know, you are putting out the, the empowering thought, you're magnetizing with the emotion you want to feel and you're taking action from that space, then the result is going to reflect that back to you. It's going to be more empowering. It's going to be a result that feels better for you, most likely. And when you experience the result and you have that experience, then you're going to generate a new set of emotions that may look like feeling proud of yourself, feeling successful, feeling love, feeling joy, feeling bliss, whatever that is. So the sequence itself is not complicated. It's knowing how to navigate each step and how to stop yourself from defaulting into old programs and instead moving into the new way of being. That's where a lot of people struggle and that's where a lot of people buckle. So with that being said, I wanted to introduce the, the second insight. And this is something that Dr. Joe talks about. And I really loved the way he calls it. He calls it the river of change. And when it comes to, you know, change, there's something he says, I'm not going to quote him perfectly here, um, but it's something along the lines that the hardest part about change is not making the same decision as the day before. That's something that he says. And I really feel that because when we look at change, it's really easy to talk about. It's, it's easy to say, I'm here. This is my current reality and my current personality. And here's all the things I don't like about my reality. I don't like, maybe you're not making the money you want to make or, excuse me, or you don't have the relationships that you want to have, um, or your health isn't like up to par the way that you want it to have. So it's the easy part is saying, okay, well, this, these are the things that I don't currently enjoy about my life. These are the things that I want to change about myself. So that's the easy part. And then there's like a less easy, but still, you know, this is more where the, the power of clarity comes in, which is it's really important when you identify what you don't like and what you want to shift in your life. Well, you need to know where you're going. You need to know where point B is. And this is something that I also teach a lot um, inside of the journey, which is my 12 month all access pass to all my courses, trainings, and as well as Q and A's with me and whatnot. So in that container, one of the key principles um, of that is really like, you need to understand where you are now and you need to understand where you're going. And so that's where it gets a little more challenging of actually stretching your imagination and giving yourself permission to say, I want to live in this kind of house and I want to live, make this kind of money. And I want to have these kinds of relationships. Like this is what I want. and getting really clear on it. This is where I also see a lot of people, um, defaulting into old programs is because they know what they don't want. But when we ask them what you do want, I notice this over and over again with my students and my clients is that they either, they will short sell themselves. So they'll ask for less than what they actually want. Um, and they won't allow themselves to dream big enough, which is detrimental in and of itself. Because if you're going to dream, if you're going to entertain a dream, might as well make it a good dream, might as well make it a big dream instead of wasting your time, like, you know, and your energy dreaming little dreams that 
you know, aren't even exciting to you. So what's that big, exciting dream? And how can you get super, super clear on that is going to be in the next step. And so when you know where you're going, the next thing, and one of the reasons why people don't even want to clarify B, because then the next step is very unpleasant, which is recognizing the gap. So you know where you are, you, you now have gotten clear where you want to be. And that in itself, my gosh, when I work with people like that in itself might be a few sessions just to get there, just to get that clarity of like, really, can we, can you truly own what it is that you want? And, and some, there's some, a lot of work actually that needs to be done in actually just stretching your imagination and opening you up and expanding you to what is truly possible for you versus what you think is possible, which again is being determined by your old programming. So once you can accept in your body, because change, you know, change happens to the body that Dr. Joe is one of the many, many, many experts that say this. And I, I can't say this enough because change happens through the body. And a lot of people try to mentally hack themselves into more change. It can't happen because it needs to go through your body, which is sound breath and movement. But again, this is another topic for another time. So now, you know, you're clear on what it is that you truly desire. And now you got to look at the gap. And this, this is where things get very uncomfortable because now there's only one way to fill the gap, right? And there's a gap. And the only way to fill the gap is for you to become the person, that person. So if you look at it, you know, you're here and you're at the top of the mountain. So you want to be at the top of the mountain and you're here at the bottom of the mountain. How are you going to get to the top of the mountain? Well, you need, you need tools, you need equipment to prepare yourself. You know, if you're hiking a big mountain and you're not carrying any snacks with you, you don't have any walking poles with you, like you're, it's going to be extremely uncomfortable. So number one, you're going to need some tools, some knowledge, some basic principles to carry you through. And then you're going to need to take a step and then you're going to need to take another step and another step and another step and another step and another step. Now, if you are, if you want to climb this mountain as efficiently and productively as you can, then you're going to follow the trail. But again, if you didn't read the guidebooks, if you don't have any tools, if you don't have a compass, um, if you didn't listen to, you know, what one of the guides said to you, you might also stray and wonder and find yourself in doing a complete circle at the bottom of the mountain before finding yourself exactly where you were before and realizing that you took a lot of steps, but you didn't actually progress. And this is where a lot of people get screw themselves up when it comes to self-development and when it comes to creating transformation in their life is because they're working hard, but they're not working smart. And because they don't have the right tools and because they're not using, maybe they even have a toolbox and they're not using it. They're not actually looking at their compass. They're not asking the right questions. They will start going into a whole detour around this mountain and they'll work really hard and they'll come back sweaty and be like, yeah, I just walked for five hours and then realize that they like just went a little bit up the mountain. I see this a lot in the plant medicine community as well. Like people who have done hundreds of ayahuasca ceremonies and still struggling with the same problem still having the same issues. And it's like, at this point, dude or dudette, there is no amount of like more plant medicine isn't going to help you. You need to integrate what you've learned and actually apply the tools and go up the mountain, not around it, looking for another thing that's wrong for you, looking for another trauma that you need to resolve, looking for another like distraction to, to, uh, to take you away from feeling the discomfort that you will inevitably need to feel when it comes to change, when it comes to going up the freaking mountain. Because if you never climbed that mountain before, there's going to be shit coming up for you. You might feel scared. You might feel insecure. You don't know how to do it. You've never done this before. There's going to be so many stories that the ego like, you know, conjures up and delivers to you to tell you why you can't do this anymore. There's so many stories and that's what that river of change that Dr. Joe talks about is that there's a river in between point A and point B and that river, you need to cross that river in order to get to the other side of change. And it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to be like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Never done it before. Similar to the mountain metaphor. I just like the mountain metaphor better. Sorry, Dr. Joe, but I like this one better for myself, um, is you're going to need to do something that's uncomfortable. 
and there's no way around it. And one of my biggest transformation, I, I don't even like using the word hack, but one of my biggest transformation insights that I could possibly give to anyone, to myself, to my clients, to you listening now is that if you truly want to create transformation in your life, and if you want to do this quickly, like in an accelerated manner, you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. You, you really, this is a skill you must develop is the skill of being able to sit in the void of, I don't know. It's a skill of being able to sit in, I am uncomfortable and I'm not going to avoid this. I'm not going to pick up my phone. I'm not going to go have some sugar. I'm not going to text this person that has a crush on me so I can have some emotional validation. I'm not going to default back into working because I don't want to look at this. I'm not going to distract myself. I'm going to sit here in the void and I'm going to feel uncomfortable. Oh, feel that. And if you can do that, then you can change and quickly because the more you learn to sit in the discomfort of not knowing, the more you're going to develop a relationship with the unknown. And when you develop a relationship with the unknown, guess what? That is where all those possibilities that you're dreaming into being live. This is also something that Dr. Joe talks a lot about, about how all the change, all the transformation that we could possibly desire is in the unknown. I mean, it makes sense because it's in the quantum field. It hasn't materialized yet. It has not come down into reality. And so you have this quantum field of limitless possibilities, limitless realities playing themselves out, each operating at a frequency. And so for you to be able to pull in one of those realities that you're dreaming into being, and you're dreaming it because it's not real yet, it's not in physical reality yet, then you'll need to be vibrating at that electromagnetic um, signature, you know, thoughts and emotions. You need to be vibrating at that signature for you to be a match to that frequency in the field. It's like matchmaking. When you are feeling abundant and you're already like that dream house you're, you're dreaming into being, you already feel it now and you're already thinking and you already, you know it's possible for you and you feel it, you feel what it would be like to walk there. Then you are accelerating the speed through which you are becoming a match, a vibrational match for that possibility in the quantum. And through your actions, through your intentional actions, you pull that possibility into reality. You, you materialize it. It's really powerful stuff. It's like, this is the, 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 I suppose the scientific approach to manifestation is I know that there's so many different ways that different people talk about it, both energetically, scientifically, you know, there's, there's so many different interpretations of it. And by the way, I'm not a manifestation coach. I'm not sitting here telling you how to manifest. I'm just sharing how I understand it in my reality that that's what it actually is. And so the more that you don't do that, the more you're disconnected from that. You need to feel your connection to that reality and you bring it to life. You bring it into being by the thoughts and the feelings that you're entertaining on a daily basis. And the, obviously the more often you're thinking and feeling the thoughts that are in match to your vision, the faster you're going to be bringing that vision into reality. But if you're kind of sometimes thinking about it and then you self-sabotage yourself by telling yourself that you don't believe in it, or you, you basically are having these really positive thoughts and affirmations and you're doing the mindset work, but you're not emotionally management managing, like <laughs> you're doing the mindset work, but you're not emotionally managing. Then that means that your thoughts are not going to be a match to how you feel. So you're telling yourself, I am an abundant person. I am an abundant person. I am an abundant person, but you feel scarcity. That's not going to work either because one is canceling out the other and who's going to win your emotions going to win. You're, you feeling scarcity is going to overpower any kind of positive affirmation that anyone's given you. The thought has to match the emotion and you need to believe in the thought like with your feelings. And so that reverse change is, is this understanding that, yeah, 
it's uncomfortable and it's going to be uncomfortable. And the only way to make your way up that mountain, and if you want to do it again, efficiently, and you want to do it in a way where you're not taking a bunch of detours and wasting all of this energy and time, um, distracting yourself. And you really, truly authentically want to go up that mountain and see what's on the other side, then you're going to need to take those steps and each step you need to be in what Dr. Joe refers to as the sweet present moment, like the gener- the sweet, generous, generous present moment. I love the way he describes it, which is you are present. You're here now. You're here now with your thoughts, with your feelings, and then you intentionally take a step. So you're managing your thoughts. You're thinking the thoughts that you want to think. You stop thinking the ones you don't want to think. And you feel the elevated emotion of joy, freedom, love, whatever it is that you want to feel. You you know, your unique cocktail. You feel that elevated emotion. And thinking that thought and feeling that emotion, you act intentionally you take the next step. So with a mountain, it would be taking the next step up the trail that you know is going to be the fastest, most pleasant way to get up that mountain as fast as you can. Obviously I'm still speaking in known terms, right? Like I, in this, in this metaphor that I'm giving you, it's quite imperfect because we know where the end of the mountain is and we know where the trail is. But in reality, you don't know where the trail is and you know, don't know where the top of the mountain is. You can only imagine where the top of the mountain is. You have a vision and a dream of where the top of that mountain is and how the top of that mountain think how it feels like what, how you think in it. And and like, basically what is happening at the top of that mountain? And you don't know the path because if you knew the path, life would not be that fun. If you knew the path, what's the point? You just know what to do and where to go. And it's predictable. It's predictable. You are once again, copying and pasting, your predictable past, and it's becoming a predictable future. So you're not going to change. So that is the biggest irony of it all is that you do need to take those intentional steps and you need to, um, feel and see the vision of where the top of that mountain is for you. And you take the steps trusting and you take the steps knowing that it's going to get uncomfortable, that you're going to be asked maybe to learn things that you didn't know. You're going to be, to have your emotional capacity stretched, your belief systems broken and, and we'll need to rewrite them again. But what makes it really ultimately worth it is that when you are stepping from that space, number one, you feel better. I mean, duh, you're thinking healthier thoughts. You feel better you're acting intentionally and therefore your personal reality is going to start to mirror that back to you instead of it controlling you. Because when we set up a reality that is an autopilot, it gets to a point where it starts to control us. And that's not healthy either because then we start to just react to our environment. We start to react to, uh, you know, one of the things that Dr. Joe talks about, it's about time, time, body, and, um, and, and your environment. And so when we start to react to our environment, the house that we live in, the workplace that we're in, or we start to react to our body's addictions. And so we feel bad. And so we react by eating a big piece of cake that we knew wasn't healthy for our body or, you know, time, like we start to obsess about time and start to control time and just feel like there's not enough time. There's all the ways that we self-sabotage ourselves from change because change is really moving beyond all of that and trusting and believing in your vision, seeing and feeling the top of that mountain, and then having the discipline to bring your toolkit with you, which looks like mindset work. It looks like emotional management, regulation tools. Um, it looks like literally like healthy food and supplements and whatever your physical body needs to be able to perform at its optimal performance. Um, it looks like what your spirit needs, you know, being in an environment that lights you up, being around people that light you up, um, being in, in an energy that feels really nice and expansive to you. So all of these things are things that we get to bring with us on the journey. And as we're taking those steps forward, we need to use those tools, right? We, again, going back to my imperfect metaphor of the mountain, you're going to need to set up a tent when night comes. Otherwise you're going to sleep at the ground and you're going to be really uh, cold and you might get a lot of bug bites because you didn't like, you might have the the tent in your backpack, but you're too lazy to set it up. 
So then you're like, I don't feel like setting up this tent. So then you go and you sleep on the floor, but now you have all these bug bites and the consequences of you not setting up the tent is are worse than you putting forth the effort of setting up that tent. And this is how we self-sabotage ourselves. It's, in, it's incredible to me how many times I've seen like people who, well, not my clients, because my clients have me to get them to, do, to, to, you know, cheerlead them on and, and really support them and give them that space. But I see so many times, like in the personal development world where, you know, you're, you're trained in neuro linguistics programming and, or you have like, you know, these, these different, you go to all these Tony Robbins seminars or, uh, you know, you're, you're reading 52 books a year, whatever it is that you're doing. But when push comes to shove and it's the moment to apply change, you're not taking out the toolbox and actually applying it. That's why the thing's not happening. And so when we know we have an addiction to stress, we need to, in that moment where we're feeling stressed, to be able to say, I'm going to step outside and I'm going to breathe. I'm going to take a few breaths. I'm going to take a walk. And if you have an addiction to anger, you need to be able to say, okay, you know what? I'm angry in this moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my room, scream into a pillow, like just move the energy, the adrenaline through my body. And then once I'm calm, I'm going to come back and continue this conversation with you. So even people who know that they're like, oh yeah, haha, I have, I have, I have anger problems. Or, you know, yeah, I'm super stressed out and you have this awareness of what the issue is. And you may even have the tools where like you took a course or you worked with a coach and you got a bunch of tools and, and tricks and tips and insights of how you can move the anger or the stress or the, the grief or whatever's coming up for you. But then in the moment, in the present moment where anger is present and you still choose to unconsciously default you know, it's a choice. Once you're conscious of it, it's not actually, there's no like excuse card. And this is my personal opinion. I don't think that once you are aware of it, there's no more excuses. This just like admit that you're not doing it, you know? Um, and, and, and I've had to have this conversation with people before. And I, I've had to have this conversation with myself of like, Hey, now that I'm in this moment of anger, I have every tool I could possibly need to just actually process this right now and, 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 and be present with myself in this moment and make a different choice. So what am I going to do? And most of the time I'm making a different choice, but there's been some times where, you know, I had this moment like a couple of weeks ago where I felt, I was like, Oh, I'm feeling really stressed out right now. And I had this thought process of, okay, I'm generating stressful thoughts. Mm -hmm. And this is creating a, the, the feeling of stress in my body. Okay. And what I really want to do right now is have a piece of cake. Mm hmm wow, that's the addiction. That's an addiction to sugar that, you know, so many of us are conditioned into. Okay. Interesting. So in that moment, I'm like, okay, I actually do feel like I need to eat something. And I understand that in that moment, the thing I'm eating is going to be something that I'm doing to soothe my emotional body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have strawberries with cream instead, which, you know, is a little less naughty, but I'm consciously eating this thing, knowing I'm eating my feelings. So it was not like, oops, I ate my feelings. It was, I opt into eating my feelings in this moment. And first of all, it, what's great about that is that I didn't have guilt afterwards. I didn't have to deal with feeling bad about it because I chose it consciously and I took responsibility for it. But what's really amazing is that after that, um, I was like, okay, well, here's how I can do better next time. Here's how I can catch myself better and maybe not go for the strawberries and cream, but just be fully present with that emotional tor turmoil that I was feeling. And so, you know, for those of you listening, just, this is a, an invitation for reflection and self-responsibility because so many people want to change, but they don't, they're not willing to actually show up for themselves and get uncomfortable and do what it takes to actually change the same way where I see so many people who want to make all this money. And they're not willing to like grow their responsibility. They're not willing to shift their toxic behaviors. They're not willing to, um, you know, change the way they're operating and the way they're walking in the world. And then there's this like entitlement to change without actually being willing to extend the effort, the focus and the discipline that is required for you to create change. And, you know, again, it's one of those things where it might not be our fault but it is our responsibility because yes, it's true. We, we, we are, we're, we are living in a world where, you know, fast results and dopamine fixes and like, get it done, get it done now quick. I want it now, um, has been such a commonplace, such an expectation that we have in the way that our systems have been set up, you know, Uber and groceries delivered right in front of our door. And these are all wonderful things. I'm not in any way, shape or form, like, hating on these things, but it does create a culture of like, I need to have it. I need to have it now. And one of the things I found is that it really builds character 
to be able to actually be like ex- extend the discipline and the devotion to say, no, I'm walking up this mountain. I don't see the mountain, but I know it exists. And I am, my work is to become the person who's on top of that mountain. And that means I'm going to need to learn things that I don't yet know. I'm going to need to unlearn things that have been self that I've been using to self-sabotage, or I'm going to need to unlearn things that are not serving me. I'm going to need to find better ways to take care of my mindset, of my emotional body, of my physical body, of my spirit. Like things need to change. And I will show up with a different set of thoughts, a different thought set of feelings and a different set of actions to become the match for that new reality. And that takes energy. It takes your free will and your willpower to an extent for you to become the person who already has what you're dreaming into being now. And crossing that river of change is going to be key to that. It's it's what is going to allow you to go from A to B. And by the time you get to B, now you become somebody who knows how to cross that river. And so the really cool thing that I found in my personal experience is that the more I do it, the better I get at it. The more I do it, the better I get at it. And the more comfortable I get with being uncomfortable. And even though, you know, if I ever got comfortable being uncomfortable, then we're just kind of like right back to the start. Then what it would tell me is that I'm thinking too small, right? So it's actually an, an acceptance that I will forever be, you know, comfortable in the uncomfortable. The uncomfortable will always feel uncomfortable. And there's no like way for me to tap out of that because if I'm tapping out of that, what it's telling me is that I'm not growing. So that acceptance in and of itself is really fun and exciting. And I know that even though there's always going to be something else that I want to create more to grow into, more to evolve into that I will always be up for the task. And that's what feels really empowering is that I am up for this task. I am up for growth. I am up for evolution. I am subscribed. I'm in. I'm here to grow. I'm here to just become more joyful, more happy, more wealthy, more, you know, abundant in every shape or form, like more, just more of me. I'm here to like download and upload all parts of my souls as much of my soul that wants to come in, in this lifetime, in this vessel. Like I am a yes for it. And that means that I need to cross a lot of rivers of change and I'm okay with that. And so just reframing that will be really supportive in, in, you know, whoever's listening and and your transformation journey to make transformation an easier, more digestible process that doesn't have to feel like a drama every time, you know, it can be beautiful. It can be smooth. And you know what? You can even be crossing several rivers of change at the same time. For all I know, there's been, there can be several things that you're working on improving and evolving in yourself. So let it be fun is, is what I would suggest. And the last thing that insight that I wanted to share today is this concept of living in survival or in creation. And this is what I talk a lot about when it comes to becoming um, the creator of your life. And what I really like about the way that Dr. Joe frames it is that I have tended to say a lot, um, the, you're either a victim or you're a creator. And I recognize that victim is a, a bit of a triggering word for people. I know I definitely was triggered by it. And so what I really love is that reframe of being in a survival state. You're either in a survival state or you're in a creation state. And a survival state is basically when you're you're in stress and what stress does to your body is what stress does is that it knocks your brain and your body out of balance and so your brain and your body when you're in a stressful state are not in homeostasis and homeostasis is what where where the body needs to be in order to be able to repair itself in order for you to have ample energy for you to feel rested, for you to feel energized, um, for the body to literally be in a rest and repair state, it needs to be in homeostasis. And when it's not in homeostasis, then you're in stress and you're knocked out of balance, which means that your system needs to work extra hard just to keep you like at baseline. So instead of, you know, when you're in a creative state, 
you're beyond baselight. You're, you've gotten beyond yourself. You are not even you anymore when you're in a creative state. Like everything's, your body's operating, you're in rest and digest. And because of that, you have all of this energy and this bandwidth to be able to tap into what is available to you outside of your reality. This is when, when you're in the creative state is when you're having a lot of ideas, your imagination's active, you're, you know, channeling, so to say, like there's, there's all this energy that's coming in and this information that's coming in from places and spaces where you're like, oh my gosh, I couldn't even make this up. Where did this idea come from? Where, where did I even create this from? It's because it's coming from something that is beyond you because you're so expanded and your energy is so in harmony and in sync with nature, which by the way, nature is the ultimately the ultimate energy harmonizer. Like it carries the frequencies of harmony. And so whenever you want to get back into a state of harmony, just be in nature, that's why it feels better to be in nature. And so you have this like really beautiful, expanded electromagnetic field and it's open and it's in receivership. And all of a sudden you just start to become beyond yourself. I mean, all of you have had the experience of being in the flow state, being in a super creative state where you're just like, wow, I could go on forever where you're, you're like working on something you're drawing or you're writing or you're, you're, you're doing some creative activity and time just goes away and you forgot that you have to pee or that you have to eat. And you just like get beyond time. You get beyond your body, you get beyond your environment and you're just so immersed in your creation. And that's what it's like to be in a creative state. But for you to be in a creative state, you can't be stressed. That's the catch. For you to be truly in a creative state, you cannot be in a stressed state because they don't go together. It's two different states of being. And so it's so important. So often throughout the day, I ask myself, am I in a survival state right now or am I in a creative state? And Something that I teach my clients, and of course I live and breathe myself, is that I don't create things from a survival state. It's not going to work out. And this is really at the, the crux of working smarter and not harder, is that it's not about the amount of hours that you clocked in or how hard you were working, or again, going back to the metaphor of the mountain, how many times you looped around the bottom of the mountain. If you're, you haven't progressed halfway to the mountain or you're not at the top of the mountain, you haven't actually done anything. And it's really hard to hear sometimes because people are so attached to this concept of, but I work so hard, but I put so much time into this. I invested so much time into this, but I've, you know, been doing this for years. But if you haven't been doing it efficiently, it doesn't like matter. (laughs) You're right where you haven't moved. And so what working smarter looks like is, this is the inquiry that I have for myself. And again, in, in, um, in the journey, which as I mentioned is, is my, is my container, um, where all of my courses and my meditations and, um, my trainings are, there's several meditations that I've created for people to, to, to support you with this, which is really this, this importance of, and this is also the purpose of meditation is to get beyond your mind, get beyond your, your, you know, your body, your environment and time and to, return back to a creative state so that you can be expansive and connected to the quantum field to be connected to the unknown so that you can create from there instead of again defaulting into all programming and that's what meditation does and so to be in a state of meditation even when I set up my mornings it's really around getting myself into the creative state and when I found that when I'm in a creative state and I sit down and I write a program it just comes out of me like like water it flows out of me like water when I'm in a creative state and I sit down to write, I'll pop out like seven, eight captions all at once. When I'm in a creative state and, mm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about something I want to write for my book, it, it flows out like water. But if I'm in a stressful state and I'm sitting in front of my computer and I'm stressed out and I'm like, I have three hours to write these captions, you can bet that those three hours, I will not even have written five captions, but I could have written the same amount of captions in 20 minutes being in a creative state. So that's how you work smarter, not harder is you manage your state of being, <laughs> you get really, really good 
and managing your state of being. And you get very, you expand your emotional intelligence so that you're able to catch your emotions in real time and allow the energy to move through your body and to get released through your body so that you're allowed to catch your thoughts and change them and pivot in them in real time. And the better you get at that, the better you'll also get at managing your energy and your time when it comes down to, um, you know, if you're, if you're running a business and you want to accelerate the growth of your business, what would it look like if you spent your, you know, energy instead of working hard 12 hours in front of your laptop, you invested, some, reinvested some of those hours in actually getting better at managing your state so that you are able throughout the day to consistently return back to a creative state and sit down in front of your computer and do the work for your business from a creative state, because in that way you'll collapse timelines and you will accelerate and you will create so much more in way less time. And it's going to be in alignment with where you're going. So it is such a better piece of work, such a better use of your time than you spending hours and hours and hours in a stressful state, you know, overeating and being sitting your butt down on a chair and feeling unhappy and feeling stressed and feeling like you're missing out on life. And then whatever it is that you create is going to come from that space. So it's not going to be as of high quality. And also this is like a really feminine approach to working as well. Um, it's really like even working with feminine energetics is being able to understand how do you align your state of being with what you're doing and understand that your output is going to be a direct reflection of the energetics of how you're feeling of your vibration. And so if your output is carrying the vibration, like the elevated high vibration of what you are dreaming into being now and your output, that action you take, that thing you created in the physical reality is holding and carrying that, then as it goes off into the world, it's going to be a match for that, right? And this can be something as simple as a caption that you've written from a really inspired creative state that is selling your offer is going to carry that energy. And so people are really going to resonate with your offer because they're resonating with, with the energy through which it was written. And so the things we do, the, our creations, the material things we create, whether it's a coaching offer, a course, or whether it's a desk or, you know, a socks that we've knitted, whatever it is that we're creating, they, it carries the frequency of that we we were embodying when we created it. And that is going to have results when it goes into the physical world and starts to engage with people. That's why, you know, you can walk into a really beautifully decorated home and feel a certain way. Like you can feel super inspired and feel like, wow, this place is amazing. I feel so expansive. I feel so amazing. And then you can walk into an equally beautifully decorated place that feels really stuffy and contractive and like, oh. I can bet you that the people, the way that it was decorated, the way this play environment was set up was not from an elevated space. So anyways, that is, uh, that is what I wanted to share regarding what it means to change. So, you know, there's obviously many more things that I can talk about. I want to be mindful of time. Um, and there's many things that I, I will be sharing both in the podcast, as well as weaving through my courses and my corporate offerings and my corporate training but the, you know, the gist is, of this is this, that being in that training for five days was really able to support me with remembering a lot of the concepts that I was doubting. Um, there's a few things that I was doubting. I was like, yeah, I know this to be true, but I don't have any evidence of it. And so what it really did is that it gave me a new level of conviction in understanding that per the name of the training that, you know, I'm, I'm getting licensed in, which is Neuro Change Solutions is that there is a solution to change. And the cool thing is that neuroscience, epigenetics, and quantum physics, all, all sciences, they give us really good, strong, easy to understand roadmap as to how we can predictably affect change. And of course, there is the mystery as well, you know, the unknown and the part that we can't control and the part that we can't have a clean methodology to. But from what I know in my being and the tools and, you know, methodologies and know how that I carry personally, I know that it's possible to change. And I know that it's possible to do it quickly when you are dedicated and when you're committed to that change and when you're willing to, you know, put your money where your mouth is. And that doesn't mean necessarily mean literally investing, although that could be that you need to learn a course, that you need to hire someone, that you need to study from a certain school and actually like receive 
the knowledge and tools and methodologies that are going to support you in being able to apply them to affect and change your reality. So yes, it means that. And it also means that once, even after you've invested that money and that time and that energy, learning the stuff, it's still sitting in your brain and you still need to go through the process of going from knowing, you know, from, from, sorry, from, um, thinking to doing to being. Like you, you, you're still going to need to go through the sequence of, I know this thing and now I'm going to apply it, embody it. And now that I embodied it, I just know it. Like it's in my cellular structure. That's how we also get to like literally change our genetic makeup is through the application and embodiment of concepts that we learn and actually like applying them until we know them so well that we don't even have to think about it anymore. And that's really like the crux of evolution. So yeah, that's the invitation. It's just really thinking about what are the ways that you're desiring to change? What does that change actually look like? And are you able to expand your imagination? Can you stretch your thinking and your emotional capacity to be even beyond, to entertain what's beyond the dream that you're dreaming and to actually claim that big dream that you're desiring to call into being? And then are you willing to cross the river of change or in the metaphor I used, are you willing to climb up the mountain and are you willing to do that with the least amount of detours and distracting yourself and actually just going in, like jumping, like go into the unknown and get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable because if you want it to come faster, well, the way to do that is to get into alignment and move with precision and intention and actually like do it, do the thing, do the thing you're scared of. And then as you're moving along, just make sure you're not detouring again, make sure you're not kind of looping again. And the best way to do that is to ask yourself, am I living right now? Am I in a state of survival or am I in a state of creation? And if you're in a state of survival, your work is to get yourself back into a state of creation. That's your, that's your primary focus. And if you're in a state of creation, then create and that's how you'll be able to dream and, and actualize your vision into being is because you're literally creating your future now as you go. So, um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's really exciting. So I'm going to wrap things up here. And, you know, if there's anything that really inspires you about today's episode and what I've shared with you today, the invitation is to, you know, take a screenshot and share it with me on social media. My handle is at Selena Costa. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you loved it. I always, I just absolutely love, um, seeing, you know, your feedback and seeing you guys tag me on social media and letting me know what you loved about specific episodes. It brings a lot of joy and also inspiration to me to, um, create new episodes. And for those of you who are listening to this episode, really resonating with what I'm sharing, um, and, and are desiring to really create big change in yourself. Just so you're aware, there's, um, in addition to my digital programs and products, which I can link to, uh, the journey below, there's two private ways that I do this. So the first track is private mentorship where, um, depending on what it is that you're looking to transform, I offer several containers. I have a four month container, a seven month container and a 13 month container where I work with you privately to really be able to identify where is it that you're getting stuck? What is it that you want to create? And what we do together is is, uh, well, number one, we support you to bring that vision to reality faster, but I also teach you the tools, the methodologies, the frameworks that are a match for your unique soul signature. And basically I pair you up with the tools, um, with the methodologies, with the processes, the practices and the systems that you're going to need to be able to consistently practice and become the version of yourself that you're bringing into, um, being now. And this is when, you know, clients that come in and they want to make a certain amount of income and they want to create certain changes in their lives. The most satisfying part about working with my clients is like, you know, I had a client that recently did a, a case study and she doubled her business revenue and she had this long lasting dream of, of moving abroad to Spain that she didn't even think was possible. And now she's literally sold her house and she's doing it. Or I had another client who also doubled her monthly revenue. And, um, I have another client who, you know, has created like her dream life for herself that she didn't think was possible because she was running so many businesses and constantly in a survival state. There's so many beautiful things that you get to like literally create when it comes to money, when it comes to influence and impact. I personally, you know, I love seeing my clients have the material things, what I personally love and find to be the most satisfying about my work is that by the time they have those material things, by the time they have the Forbes article or the six figure launch or the dream house, they've become 
a different version of themselves. Like they have become the version of themselves that they're so proud of. And they are just radiating as human beings are beautiful, um, evolved like versions of themselves. And that is the most satisfying part because nobody can take that away from you ever. And it only, the only way is up and the only way is expansion. And so, um, I do offer that support. I have very limited spots at the moment. Um, at the time of this recording, it's a two month waiting list, but for those of you who are feeling really strong calling, you're welcome to go ahead and apply. And, um, and my team will take care of you from there. And we can see if we are a match to do private coaching together. My second, um, private container route at the moment is corporate consulting. And so if you are listening to this and you are an executive, um, you're heading your own department or you're part of a, a company that you're noticing is really experiencing a lot of issues when it comes to their culture, um, that when it comes to basically team members, people are not getting along very well and it's causing a lot of inefficiencies in the business where, you know, it's affecting revenue, it's affecting performance, it's affecting basically also, um, you know, there's something to be said around the emotional health of the company. So not only is it wasteful from a financial standpoint um, and, uh, and just like a resources, human resources standpoint, it's inefficient because emotional mismanagement is exhausting. And so if you're working with a lot of people who are walking around, not being able to manage their own, their own reactions, there's a lot of projecting at each other. There's a lot of triggering at each other. And by the way, when I consult with corporates, there's a fortune 200 company that, um, I recently consulted with and it's happening on an executive level. Like it, it happens at every level. And the thing is, it is so detrimental, um, and toxic for the company because it's going to ultimately affect bottom line. And only that, um, it's going to affect the way that retention rates and the way that people work and operate. So if you are, um, in a corporate environment and you're really feeling the pull and the call, um, to, to start to um, rewrite your company culture in, from toxic to healthy, connected, collaborative company culture, and you really want to empower the leaders in your company to, um, be able to, manage themselves and to be more responsible for their reactions and to actually grow and evolve so that they're, be they're becoming the better versions of themselves. And the more they do that, the more they're able to communicate with each other. If you're desiring to have your leaders really be able to communicate with one another, to Im improve their uh, nonviolent communication and to be able to authentically communicate and relate with one another so that um, there's less miscommunication and there is more productivity in the workplace, then you're definitely going to want to reach out to me. There are several workshops that I offer. One of them is the one that um, I'm licensing for at the moment, the Neuro Change Solutions. I also offer my own, um, I have my own methodologies and unique frameworks that I offer to, um, to support corporations with really um, rewriting the story at the workplace and being able to create a more productive, collaborative, and harmonious environment in the workplace. So if that's something that you're interested in, one of my workshops, then you can go ahead again on my website or email my team at info at selinacosta.com and we can continue the conversation from there. And for all of those other people that are listening and neither of these avenues are the right avenue for you, then I highly recommend that you check out the journey. This is my 12 month container where it, you get access to every single one of my courses, my trainings, my meditations. You get um, live q and um, sessions with me in a group setting. You also get live expert trainings, live master classes where I can also answer your questions. So if you want to go deeper into what it really means to go on the journey of transforming yourself over and over and over again, then the journey is um, the perfect fit for you. And within that is my everything I've created, my entire product suite, as well as everything I will be creating in the next 12 months months, which is a lot because I'm spending a lot of time living in creator mode. So, um, yeah, whatever that the option is right for you, um, you can go ahead, check out the show notes and also, um, check out my website, www.selenacosta.com. So thank you so much for all of you who came today. I know this was a bit of a longer episode, but hopefully it was of value to you and I will see you next time. Thank you, beautiful humans for tuning into today's episode of it's not what you think. If you loved what you received today, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it helps us reach even more amazing listeners like you. If we aren't already connected on social media, come receive even more tips and inspiration by following me on Instagram at Celine DaCosta or visiting my website at CelineDaCosta.com. 
After listening to this episode, I invite you to take a few moments to reflect. What stood out to you? What were your key takeaways or breakthroughs? And if there was one action step you could take from this, what would it be? Thank you again for joining me on this journey. I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to connect in the next episode. Until then, keep sharing your unique gifts and living out your most magical life.